Good day, y'all. So what I've been up to lately is cleaning the coop out. So it was deep littered and um, so everything was taken out and then it was, it was quite deep and it had been soaked with some of the water that we were feeding chicks with and because it had tilted over and spilled in there along with their waste and now it's all brand new litter this is some wood chips and over here we had later on converted to um, hay or straw with sweet pdz in there and i threw some extra diatomaceous earth in there um just keeps it fresh keeps the mites out or any other critters and so that's clean for them and um I will show next what I have done. So in this warm bin, I added more compost. Then I added more of this um, brown layer of mulch on top of it just to keep everything clean and, and not have bugs as the top layer. And um, when it rained, I had taken the lid off of this and I laid it down facing up so that it collected some rainwater as well as rainwater going straight in there because the worms do best with rainwater and so I didn't think there were there was that much water collected as before the rains I had tried to uh, collect some worm tea and there was hardly a few drops that came out so when I got the worm tea it was it was actually quite abundant uh let me just show you here i've i've already pulled out quite a bit of uh, worm tea but here's the spout and i'm gonna try to collect some okay quite a bit comes out so i have quite a bit i love it so um i had so much that i actually uh put it in a jug just a little bit and then filled it the rest of the way with water and I just went about watering every single plant in the food forest and made it look uh, made everything um, fertilized and then what I did was this is my walking path uh, that I go in my food forest and I just pulled out all of the, I just raked all of the wood chips to one side and all the wood chips to the other side and then um, that's where I dumped the coop contents the old uh, ammonia smelling coop contents the deep litter and then I just threw the new the mulch back on top of it so that it will break down underneath and uh, and not attract bugs so it's nice and clean and I cleared out this area which had a lot of crabgrass and pulled it out those two things sticking up over there are two grass, uh, blackberry canes and I just kind of leveled out this whole walking path of wood chips because I moved it to cover all the chicken bedding the old spent chick chicken bedding and uh, I have a couple spots where I had heavily put um, coffee grounds so there it is and added some soil just refreshing everything and getting ready for uh, any more rains as you can see there's a little bit here of the spent um, bedding and I had some more eggshells so I recently placed more eggshells spread them kind of randomly here um, here and there just to supplement the soil around my trees and other things that I really really treasure and want them to succeed and do well so finally, because I got these plants from the clearance section, and what I did was 
I deadheaded them, so you find the, these dead one deadheads. They've already been pretty well spent. And I cut them out, and I let them dry, and then I stick them in the envelopes, and label them, and then later on I'll harvest the seeds from them, and I'll have a ton of seeds. So, hope that helps you guys in your gardening and in your endeavors to save money while gardening. Have a great day. So yesterday the kids helped me plant corn in this little section next to the chicken coop, the chicken run. And what happens is uh, I had mulch here and I had them move the mulch aside and then stick the corn um, kernels in there, the seeds. And then closest to the run, I had them plant uh, snap peas. So here's the brand. It's corn, sweet corn jackpot hybrid. And 84 days to harvest by Ferry Morse, non-GMO. And then second, and um, the soil looks pretty good. It's like some of the mulch had already broken down and I just watered it this morning and over here I have uh, the snap peas from botanical interests and they're the ones that are going to be near the edge here and then over here is the corn and of course I have some um, Bermuda grass or crab grass growing on the side here no big deal, I'll just pluck them out and let them dry out and then use it kind of as bedding in the chicken coop. And that way once it's dried out it won't regrow and it'll absorb some of the chicken waste and then um, then I can just throw it under the mulch pile, uh, compost it away and it'll become food again for nutrients again for the soil. So it's a cycle. And I'm going to be adding more water to my, um, more rainwater to my worm bin today. And I just went around and watered everything today. And I think I'm going to trim some holy basil flowers to stick into the chicken coop. Uh, I just changed out the bedding, but I like to have different scents in there to um, keep mites out. And also, I've thrown diatomaceous earth into the run and into the coop. And those are ways to keep um, pests out of the garden. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And help me out. Um, if you're if you like my videos and want me to continue please support me thank you very much good morning everyone so I wanted to show you that the sensivaria rooted really well this one I had indoors and it rooted very well just in some water whereas the ones outside in water didn't do too well I think they had to struggle with the cold weather and then getting warm in the days and then cold at night. I, that's what I think it is, I'm not too sure. So now I'm gonna pot it into these little pot, um, plant pots and um, in no time it'll have, it'll fill in and then I can transplant the whole thing into a bigger pot. And the same likewise, likewise for my pothos. Um, I rooted it, it's doing fantastic, and I'm just going to put it in this pot. And that's how you can propagate lots and lots of plants, and just keep your eye on them, and, um, and give them away as gifts, or have, uh, what I do is I have one, the mother plant, and a spare. I always do that in case one dies. And I learned that from some rain oaks. So, have a great day. So there they are, potted up. And I'm going to do that. So here's my other batch of Sansevieria that were outside. 
and I was trying to read them and it looks like this one's not doing too well it's waterlogged but maybe being in, indoors will it'll root better so I'm going to put it in this jar that those were in and then I'm going to um, try to root them indoors and see how it goes and then the one that I divided it did great and I gave that away and it's in a, a different pot but it did really well and in the meantime I am trying to the other other ones um, that I cut and I put directly in soil they seem to be doing okay one I over watered a bit and it's um, waterlogged and is dying but the other is doing well so um, definitely let them dry out and then water them. Thank you for watching. Hello everyone. So here I have some calendula, spent calendula blossoms and I let it dry. It's been dry for like a month and then what I'm trying to do is collect the seeds. So I just take one of these blossoms, um, let me try to find one and I pull off all the yellow bits, uh, the petals, what was once the petals. I pull those off, it's kind of hard to do with one hand. Gently pull those off and then what remains, let me show you after I pull off the blossoms. So I said it incorrectly. What I meant was after you remove all the petals, this is what you have left. And then I'm going to pull off this middle bit. Oops. Um, so here, I'm going to take off. It's just that easy. And you can take off all the seeds. So I'm just rubbing it off. And afterwards you can let it dry a little longer too to ensure that it's dry. But I'm pretty sure it's dry. But you, you could still do that though. And make sure to place your seeds in a cool dry place. So like in a paper bag so it can further dry out and breathe and it won't grow mold or mildew or whatnot. And uh, then you'll have lots of future seeds to grow and to give away as gifts. And that's how you do calendula, um, how you extract calendula seeds. Thank you for watching. So here is another one that is loaded with seeds and it's so easy. Look, it just crumbled and it was massive and it provided tons of seeds there. So it's that, it's really, really easy. So here are the spent uh, calendula blossoms and here is my huge pile of seeds. and. By the way, this container here that I got was when I had my children and I was in the hospital and you know how they have the little hygiene kit in here. So I, I just washed it out and I use this because it's a free resource and no reason to get rid of it. It's useful. Um, for a while I used it to do like, to wash my face and to do like facial things and then I started to repurpose it in the garden um, because you can after washing it out um, you can harvest things and place them in here all kinds of useful things and in this case I collected the calendula in it so that's a good way to repurpose something um, so there we have it so I'm going to stick those in some envelopes and label them what they are and what year they are from so that I can use my older seeds and keep 
always have the newer seeds um, to use afterwards.